Miss Fluffy Temper. Today we are going to make apple empanadas, beef and cheese empanadas. Um, I found a wonderful whey biscuit recipe to use up some of the whey from the mozzarella the other week. And then I'm going to freeze the rest of the whey because it's about time I got it out of my fridge um, before it goes bad. And then I'm also going to make a cherry cobbler. Um, for somebody very special. So let's start. We're going to start with the insides of the um, beef and cheddar empanadas. Um, so we're going to toss some ground beef into my pan. And then we'll chop up some onions and some garlic. And we'll it get it going. And then while it's cooking, we'll start the cobbler. So if you're looking for the recipes, they are on my blog at bakelikeafluffy.food.blog. I put upcoming recipes on there too, so if you're interested in what we're doing next week, are more than welcome to buy the ingredients and we can do it together. I will post those as soon as I finish up here. And then I also just recently started a Discord. So if you want to see anything get made, if you're having any difficulties with a recipe, or if you tried one of the recipes that I found and it worked out well or it failed, feel free to let me know on the Fluffy Temper Discord. So next week I did have a request to make some vegan desserts. So I've got a vegan chocolate cake that will be coming, um, a vegan, hold on, gingerbread. I love gingerbread. I know it's not a season for gingerbread, but it's cold and cloudy, so we're making it anyway. And uh, some vegan peanut butter cookies. All right, let's not have that in there. In the garlic. So for the empanadas, come on, garlic's protesting. I've got one onion, one pound of ground beef. I'm going to throw in three garlic cubes. There's a chicken running across my yard. Okay, sorry I got distracted. And some garlic here. I love garlic. So I'm going to cheat a little bit with this recipe. <clears throat> it says to put in fresh tomatoes and jalapenos. I bought salsa. I don't know about you, but the produce at my house is not looking so hot. So while that's doing its thing, we'll go ahead and start our empanada. Uh, I'm sorry, not our empanadas. We're going to start <coughs> the cherry cobbler. And I'll keep bouncing back and forth to make sure I'm not burning my beef. That's not the right button. That's the right button. There it is. All right, so we're going to make the inside of the cobbler first, or I guess the bottom of the cobbler first. I have my oven. It just beeped at 350 degrees, which is what I like to put my oven at every time. So I like this recipe. It does have um, directions for fresh cherries or frozen cherries. 
can't even find fresh cherries at this exact moment at my grocery store. And if I could, they'd be ridiculously expensive. So we're going the frozen and thawed route. So it says to do six cups. These are 16 ounce bags. So we're going to do three bags. What I like about frozen cherries is that they're pitted already. Um, it's no fun pitting cherries. It takes forever. Alright. So, one fourth cup of sugar. That looks about right. We're going to do some lemon juice. Lemon juice brightens uh, fruit flavors. You put it in jams and jellies when you're making them. There's really no other way to describe it. It just brightens the flavor. It makes them a little more potent. <clears throat> All right, and then a teaspoon of vanilla. Oh. Hint, it says a fourth of a teaspoon. So we're gonna just do a fraction in the lid here. Almond extract is very potent. You're going to taste it. <clears throat> Almond extract is also the um, artificial cherry kind of flavor that you get in um, things like ice cream and, and other cookies. And the maraschino cherries. Alright. So... According to the special directions, we're going to do three tablespoons of flour, and I'm going to do a little more, in the frozen cherries because they're letting off a little more juices. The flour is going to uh, thicken all those juices in there along with the sugar so we get that nice uh, thick jelly. We're going to call it a jelly, nice thick jelly once we bake it. I think they might be a little juicy. Um, you can, I probably should have drained them first, but I don't like to waste all that cherry juice. So we're gonna chuck in another keeping tablespoon there. Make sure it's not too runny. Now, of course, you don't want it to look super thick when you've got it first in the, the bowl. It's going to thicken up once we put it in the oven. to our pan. We're going to set this to the side. And I'm going to rinse out my bowl here. I'm breaking up the, the beef for the empanadas. That way, there it is sponge. That way it's small enough that I can actually fold it in the dough once we get there. So this cobbler recipe um, uses like a cookie dough to put on top. <clears throat> Another way that you can make a cobbler is to do like a cake dough on top. If you were feeling super rushed and you just wanted to toss one together, you can actually take the canned cherries and put them in a pan and then you take some pre-made cake mix, you just a, a Betty Crocker white cake mix and you sprinkle it on top and then you just cut little slices of butter and kind of space it out all over the place and stick it in the oven and about 30 minutes you're going to have a cobbler. So this one's a little more labor intensive <clears throat> and it'll taste good but if you're in a hurry there's nothing wrong with doing it the other way. You do you in your kitchen. 
So for the topping, we are going to use two thirds cup of sugar, which is almost our full cup here. Two or three fourths cup of flour, which most definitely is almost the whole thing. Got some baking powder, one teaspoon. Salt to make the baking powder work. And then we're going to do the same thing with the almond and the vanilla extract. We'll do about a capful of our vanilla and then just a hint of the almond because we don't want to overpower anything here. And then we have six tablespoons of melted butter. Here's my knife. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, sir. this in the microwave for a minute. Hopefully it doesn't blow up on me. So our beef and onions are just about cooked. I think by the time we put this in the oven, we'll be able to add the rest of the seasonings to that guy. blew up the butter. We're going to have to clean the microwave. Give this guy a good little mix here. Oh, that smells good. I think this recipe makes good sugar cookies. So we're going to take our dough, we're going to kind of flatten it out. This doesn't have to cover all of it, you kind of want to make like little islands of your dough. That way as you scoop it out to serve it, you get a, a hint of the crust, the topping. some holes here. There we go. I'll wash off my fingers. So we're going to plop this guy in the oven until everything thickens up and the top is nice and golden brown. All right, now back to the empanada filling. Where did you go? Oh, that's next week. There it is. I found it. So onion, garlic, ground beef, tomato paste I put here. I know it's nice that they sell little tiny cans of tomato paste, but I really wish that they would sell it even smaller. 
I mean, one tablespoon. So we're going to put about one tablespoon doesn't say it in the recipe, but who doesn't like a little crushed red pepper? So we'll just gently sprinkle that on the top. We don't want to cook anybody. And I think I've decided recently that cumin is one of my new favorite things. I don't know why, it must be the weather. I've been on a cumin kick. Oh, that's sad. I'm out. All right. Okay. Let's get some of these put away so that I've got some more space as we go on here. Rolling out the empanadas is going to take up some space. All right. So this says half a cup of chopped tomatoes, half a cup of pickled jalapenos. And I'm not going to forget the salt. I am not at work. I'm allowed to use salt here. Half a cup and half a cup is a cup, so I'm going to use a cup of this salsa. And it's okay that it's a little liquidy, although I'm going to drip all the way over there. Because we can always cook it until the liquid goes away. Mix all this up. And then wait for the house to start smelling absolutely wonderful. I don't know if you can see it, it's dark in here. So there's our empanada filling. I'm going to leave it on the stove top on low just a little bit. We'll dry it out. Although it's really not too bad. So we'll put that guy on hold. I'm going to do some dishes. We'll make the filling for the apple empanadas. I lied. We're going to make the biscuits next. Because the filling for the apple empanadas is not going to take very long. So I have been searching four years for a nice, fluffy biscuit recipe. I, mean, I hate to say one that very much mimics the store-bought ones that are super buttery on top and all fluffy and they just kind of like melt in your mouth and they're a little salty, right? So I'm hoping that using the whey is going to give me that lift that I'm looking for. And if it doesn't work, I will still be on the hunt for the perfect biscuit recipe. I know they're out there. I've seen little grandmothers make them. Would they give me the recipe? No, they didn't want to share. I think they were secretly sold. <clears throat> My grandma was on a health food kick, so she made everything with wheat flour, so her biscuits were definitely not fluffy. All right, come on, biscuits, load faster. All right, 
looks like we got all the extra liquid out of there. So I turn the oven off. We'll let that stuff cool. See, in the picture they look good. Fingers crossed. And so far, the way has really done amazing things for me. Those were the best pancakes I've ever had. Come on. Just the jump to the recipe. Okay. So we're going to go for four cups of flour. If we make extra, we can toss these in the freezer. <clears throat> and then you just pull them out and pop them in the oven. Make some sausage gravy, boom, breakfast is done. So we're going to go for some salt. So that's four, four cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, and we're going to do one teaspoon of sugar. That's wet, and I really don't want to put it in my baking soda. That'll make a mess. So this says half a teaspoon of baking soda. There we go. And two tablespoons of baking powder. Fun random little tidbit. Baking soda, much like your childhood volcanoes with the vinegar and the baking soda, when we add the whey, it's acidic and it's actually going to cause some of the bubbles to make things fluffy. And then the baking soda, or the baking powder is going to help. <laughs> Sitting in the background doing its thing. Alright, so one and a half sticks of butter will give us a little mix here. I like the measurement of one and a half sticks of butter. We're going to make sure this is cold butter. Much like in a pie crust, if you use cold butter, it will ooh, um, it won't melt until you cook it as long as you handle it as little as possible. And if you still have hunks of butter in between your dough, that's what helps make those uh, fluffy or flaky layers and a flaky pie crust or a biscuit. I always have flaky biscuits. I don't ever have fluffy flaky biscuits. We're on the hunt. So we're gonna cut this into cubes. So if my job hadn't commandeered my food processor still, this would be a great recipe to put into a food processor because as we handle the butter and the flour, our hands are going to melt the butter. So we're going to do this quickly. We're going to turn this into sand as quick as we can so we don't melt it too much. Ma'am, I haven't dropped anything. I don't know why you want to be right there. I don't. You're so goofy. I have uh, my bulldog right at my feet here. So we're going to smash the butter and the flour together until this looks like sand. And that way, all of these flour covered butter chunks will end up being nice little flaky layers.
Here we go. So here we have some nice, nice almost damp sand going on. That texture on the beach right before you get to the like soaking wet sand. <clears throat> Ma'am, I really need to stand in this spot. I know you're you're super cute, but you're also in the way. So this says one and a half to two cups of whey or buttermilk. We're gonna start with one cup because we don't want this to be too wet. Although I think the one and a half cups is gonna be spot on. So if you don't have whey, you can use buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you can use regular milk. So we're going to go ahead and add the other half cup here. There we go. some baking sheets because that's where this is going next. Yes ma'am. Make ourselves some room. We're going to toss this out onto our counter. Wrapping the sugar. I should label the outside of these so I know which one's which. Throw some flour down so we don't stick. Although we're going to stick to my fingers anyway. So we're going to knead this just a little bit until it all kind of comes together. We don't want to play with it too much because we definitely don't want our butter melting in our hands. flour on a rolling pin so we don't stick. Sprinkle some more on top so we don't stick. So I think part of my problem is that I like to roll these out super, super thin. Does this want to tell me how many I'm going to make? It says it yields 24. Let's go for 12. <laughs> I think 12 is a good number. What do you think? Get my handy dandy biscuit cutter. Kind of close to each other so as they rise up in the oven 
um, if all goes well, they'll touch each other and help each other go up. I think that's the theory behind that. Half-heartedly put it back together there. That biscuit's going to have a hole in it. So I think this will be the last time we roll this one out. We'll get a couple more out of this. Looks like a biscuit. There we go. So I'm going to blow up some more butter in the microwave because apparently that's what we did today. And we will put some melted butter on top of these before and after they go in the oven. get some dough off of our hands. One of these years, I'm going to buy myself a pastry brush. One of these years. Put a little bit of butter on top. Oh, give it. Now we're going to let these sit for a hot minute while we finish up some of the empanadas. That'll give these time, I'm hoping maybe, to rise just a little bit. Um, there's no yeast, so it's not going to like super get fluffy. But maybe it'll give us a little something something. Alright, let's get some dishes done. We'll make the filling for the apple empanadas. my phone over because I can see this going over really poorly. I want to say that there's not something um, as in a kitchen that's too large, but I think when push comes to shove, you're the one who's got to clean it. So I figure with one crowded countertop, it's one crowded countertop that I have to clean. It's not like when I'm at work when I have, you know, eight foot long counters and tables that I have to clean off all the time. And even if you're not working in a spot, you're going to get flour there. Right. 
So the cobbler is looking good in the oven. We have the filling for the beef empanadas on the stove top. We're going to do the apple empanada filling next. My door shut and my dog is outside. Maybe I'll let him back in. Nah, he's on fun. My little border collie mix guy is um, currently hanging out on my back deck watching the chickens. Nobody's going to be a hawk lunch today. right underneath my feet, hoping that I'm going to drop something on the ground. But you can't blame her for trying, can you? Although in her defense, I probably will drop flour on her head here in a sec. Not on purpose. I'm a little close to my edge there. flour and stickiness off my counter here, at least briefly. When we go to roll out the empanadas, we're going to do it again. Pretty soon here, my house is going to start smelling like cherry cobbler, and I am going to be in heaven. All right, almost ready here for the second half. eventually and we most definitely need this all right so nope that's cheese apples I'm gonna scooch my butter out of the way here oh give me just a sec I'm gonna let the dog in oh hello sir did you have fun back. Alright, got the biscuits, got the cherry cobblers in the oven, apple and banana I'm going to take the stickers off my apples here. So I think this says to use five apples. Um, I'm not super motivated to make a massive amount of apple empanadas. So we're gonna cut it down to three. So we're doing nice thin slices of the apples. We want them thin because 
We want them to be able to cook. And if you make them too thick, which is fine in an apple pie, because the apple pie is going to be in the oven for, you know, an hour. But when you're making the empanadas, they are not going to be in the oven or on the frying pan for an hour. So we're going to do them nice and thin. Save the cores for the chickens. That's a seed. You know, I'm looking at this thinking that maybe I just want to do two apples. So I think we're just going to do two apples. So for my Dungeons and Dragons group, we have two people, um, I'm sorry, who are going to be out of town. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do with the food I make today is either one, take it to work, or two, I'm especially with the empanadas. I'm actually going to uh, cook them just a little bit in the oven today. And then when they cool, I'm gonna put them in a Ziploc bag and stick them in the freezer. And then I can pull them out whenever I want to, stick them in a little frying pan and uh, cook them up. keep chopping. We want these small enough that they can go inside of our little empanadas. They're not going to be very large. We're not thinking calzones. We'll do little matchsticks. You're more than welcome to peel these if you don't like apple peels. I don't like to peel anything, so I don't. I don't peel potatoes when I make mashed potatoes. No, no. We call it rustic. <coughs> and then you put your pinky in the air and pretend like you're fancy. <coughs> when in truth, you're just being lazy. I don't even think I own a peeler. Actually, I might actually own a peeler. Not that I would know, because I don't ever use it. But as long as you don't mind the texture of the peels, leave them on. Aren't they supposed to be better for you? I love green apples, especially when you cover them in caramel. But even a green apple on its own is pretty good. Almost there.
Just some end pieces left. I do love making empanadas, if only because of the whole put them in the freezer and then cook them the next day thing. It makes busy nights really easy. There we have our apples. So my roommate is currently out of town and he is very concerned about his dog. Um, bless his heart. His dog is fine. I promise, I've been paying attention to him. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, we'll leave it. Okay. Oh boy, so sugar. Where's my, there it is. I lost my measuring cup there for a minute. So we're gonna toss in two cups of sugar. cinnamon and whenever I see cinnamon I always toss a nutmeg I just like the way the flavors go so here's our lemon juice and fruit again brighten the apples up just a little bit so about a teaspoon Then it says one cup of raisins, but we didn't put in uh, four pounds of apples either. So we're just going to do a little sprinkling of raisins in here. It does say to soak them in warm water and then drain them. I don't have the time or energy for that. So we're gonna chuck them in the way they are. And then we'll give this A good stir. Get that cinnamon and sugar covering all of our apples. It smells good already. Definitely has the apple pie thing going. Although I've never put raisins in an apple pie. So we'll set this guy to the side. We're setting everybody to the side today. All right. Now for the empanadas themselves, we gotta do the dough. Let's make some room here. Probably don't need vanilla anymore. Hello, ma'am. Pardon me. That wasn't a very good part of me. I can't open the fridge when you're in front of it. So we are going to double, double this recipe. Yeah, we're gonna double it. I'm gonna need more flour. We're gonna poop today. Um, we're going to double this recipe because we do have two different kinds of empanadas we're making and we might as well make all the dough at the same time. So we're going to do six cups of flour. And I'm going to get more flour. Six. 
I might as well make in this now. Since I'm going to be throwing a flower on the counter anyway. So I had a gentleman make these for me. And uh, I asked him for containers that would hold five pounds of sugar and flour. And they do. I'm, but I forgot that I buy ten pounds of everything at a time. <clears throat> So I'm, I don't know, can you make a pot? You probably can, I gotta ask him. All right, four teaspoons of sugar, we're gonna call that eight. That looks about right to me. One tablespoon of baking powder is now going to be two. going to deviate from this particular recipe just a little bit. This one says to put some more cinnamon in our dough. We're not going to do that. I think I put plenty. I am currently just following the recipe for the apple empanadas. Um, but since we're making it for both, we don't want cinnamon in with our beef. I mean, you could have cinnamon in with your beef. I think that's like a Midwestern chili thing. <clears throat> All right, so a pinch of fine salt. We did that. So two pinches of salt half a cup of good quality lard. There's my knife. So there's half a cup. We want more than half a cup because we're doubling it. So one cup of lard going into the pot. I knew there was a reason I bought the lard. I don't use it often, but when I'm making a lot of um, Mexican dishes, I end up using a lot of it. It is a fairly popular food. Now we'll throw in two eggs. Three fourths cup of water. Times two. We're gonna go a little short on the second one. Because because we do want this to turn into a dough. We're going to half-heartedly mix this together and then we'll get our hands in there and finish mixing it up. Although I probably could have used the way in here too. doesn't look like much now. Let's dump her out. So if we need to, even though it's on the counter, we can still add the rest of the water that the recipe required. It is just so much easier to add more later. Than it is to take it away. Although we could just top it off with a little more flour, but if you go way overboard, you start messing with the flavor and the way the baking soda and baking powders work.
So if you don't have lard at home, you can use shortening. If you don't have shortening, you could use butter. Ma'am, don't step on my feet. I promise you, I haven't dropped anything. Oh my goodness. Come on, pardon me, let's go. Scooch, I need that spot. You can clean up later. So we're gonna finish mixing this mess together and then we're going to dust our countertop. And we'll roll it out. There we go. So we're going to cut this in half, well, three quarters and a fourth. Ma'am, stop licking my feet. I'm not dropping anything. I don't even see flour down there. You're being goofy. Now I just put flour all over the floor. <clears throat> that bulldog is bound and determined to kick me out of my spot. We'll just have her do bake like a fluffy next time. So we're going to go fairly thin on these guys. And our biscuit cutter is now an empanada cutter. We're gonna make these bite size like appetizers. If you want them bigger, use a bigger cup. Here we go. Checking on our cobbler. It is looking absolutely beautiful. So we're going to flatten these guys out just a little more. Let me spoon go. That's a fork. Although I do need a fork. We're going to take some of our filling and put it on half and fold it over. The cutest little tiniest empanadas. There we go. There he is. And we're going to do this for the next 45 minutes. No, I'm joking. It's not going to quite take that long. Although, 
I am going to cook them on the biscuits, or on the biscuit pan, so I don't run out of pans. It smells so good. I think I'm hungry. I'm going to fry some of these up and have them for dinner. So you want to try to get a pretty, oh, I forgot the cheese. <laughs> All right, we're going to do cheeseless ones. I guess I could throw it in now. We'll have three without cheese. In case you didn't know, there's a, a rip here direction on <laughs> cheese packets. That didn't work. Let's try that again. Scooch. There we go. So we're going to throw cheese into it. Um, probably about a cup here. I'm just doing a handful. Give it a half-hearted mix around while trying not to touch my pan with my metal spoon. So you're going to want to try to get a really decent seal on these. If you don't, worst case scenario, they're just going to spill out a little bit. If you have a hard time with them sticking together, you can run some water on them like you would for an egg roll wrapper. Although, this dough is fairly, fairly sticky. So it shouldn't give you too many problems. made it too thin. My beef punched a hole in it. I just smashed it back together. <laughs> if you wanted to make these pretty, you could take a fork and run it around the edges. Um, like you would a, a pie crust. Give it a, a nice little edge. You can do all sorts of fancy things with the edges of these guys. But we're keeping it simple today. Ooh, there's the other dog underneath me. You bring out the beef and the dogs come out. So we got a little bit of height, just a smidge, on our biscuits. We're going to pop them in the oven. Oh, ma'am, you're going to want to scooch away from the oven. Come on. Thank you. Try not to cook the dog. Cobbler's starting to smell nice. All right, let's keep going. Let's see if we can make some. Of them. So you can put just about anything you want into an empanada. We could have done our cherry cobbler filling. You could do chicken. You throw chili in there. 
I mean, it's really just a, a nice base. Ham and cheese. So if you're not feeling the Mexican food, you can put just about anything you want inside of an empanada. going here until we run out of beef and then we'll switch over to our apples. I hope everybody's having a wonderful evening and a happy Friday on what I hope was a short week for you. Totally forgot that we had Monday off as a holiday. <clears throat> Although I was working anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, but I actually put my trash on the curb today. And uh, trash man's not coming until tomorrow. Apparently he did have Monday off. Although I do not have crabby neighbors, so they are not going to be mad at me for leaving the trash can out for two days. Just a second here, we will roll this out again so we get more circles. about halfway done with the pound of ground beef we put in here. Was a little dry there. There we go. It was sliding all over the place. Almost lost a cup. kind of relaxing. Beef speaking out on that one. There we go. Oh, come on.
We are almost getting to the bottom of our beef here. So I think what I'm going to do with this last pile of dough is make a couple larger ones. The more you play with the dough, the stiffer it's going to get. <clears throat> Pardon me, ma'am. Still in the way. There you go. Thank you. That way I don't have to play with the dough too much more. I, mean, I could, nah, I was gonna say I could add a little bit of water and thin it out a bit, but who are we kidding? At some point I would like dinner tonight, and I think I'm eating empanadas. beef out of the way there. couple larger ones here and then we'll switch on to the apple after I clean the beef off the counter because we don't want a apple flavored or beef flavored apple in bananas that'd be interesting So these larger ones aren't going to be pretty, they are definitely just for me. And because I start to get a little impatient when I have to do the same thing over and over and over again for an hour. Biscuits are getting poofy. I'm super excited about that. Alright. So let's clean off our counter a little bit. Get rid of this beef flavoring and we'll switch to the apples. Almost clean here.
There we go. Beef is gone. Dry off the counter before I throw some more flour down on it. And I'm going to scooch the sugar out of the way. And these eggs, because I'm not going to need them anymore. Ooh. I think I just keep wanting to look at it. All right. All right. Throw some flour down. Grab our dough. So I'm going to make these ones a little bit bigger. So I'm thinking empanadas for breakfast. I mean, if you're gonna have a donut, you might as well have an empanada, right? Size. I'll find it. The right shape is here somewhere. That's the right shape. Oh, a mason jar. That'll work. It's the same size. It's a good idea. Do I have a cookie cutter? Oh, we're going to wing it. It'll be fun. So we're going to get the general shape, and then I'll just run a knife through it. Because I don't have any cups big enough. I mean, I probably have a cookie cutter somewhere that's big enough, but I may not. I mean, we could also do them in uh, squares if we wanted to. Just a little bit. Put our nice sugary filling in there. Seal it up.
Ooh, we got a little juicy there. We're going to smash and fold our edges around here a little bit. It's almost done. I'm super excited. <clears throat> I do need to put this guy on top. Actually, I don't think I can put that guy on top. Well, we're going to try anyway. You can see the bottoms of my muffins are starting to brown up a little too much. I put them on the top. So worst case scenario, if you don't seal up the edges and you ran out of pans that had edges to catch all the juices that are going to pour out, you're going to be cleaning your oven. Which, I mean, I guess it could be worse. And I already have to clean the microwave. There we go. We'll roll this guy out probably one more time here. Get a couple more apple empanadas out of it. And then we'll start cleaning up while everything's finishing in the oven. So if I did these more often, I would probably buy myself a larger cookie cutter. But I probably only make empanadas a couple times a year. I mean, I love them, don't get me wrong. But they're a little time consuming. It's like making wontons. I only make wontons a couple times a year or two. popping out the side. Don't do that. I need you to seal. I was really joking about having it be the worst thing you could do is clean your oven. I don't want to clean the oven. There we go. This one's a little full. There we go. are done. I'm going to clean off my countertop and I'm pretty sure the apple cobbler is done. So let's make some room for it. I'm also pretty sure our last bunch of biscuits are also done. 
Almost lost a glass. So I'm going to save this. I can put it in anything I feel like. Excuse me, ma'am. I could make an apple pie with raisins in it if I wanted to. I could throw it in some pancakes if I wanted to make pancakes in the morning. I could make Pop-Tart dough, which is just pie dough, and make Pop-Tarts with raisins and sliced apples. Although that usually works better if you puree it. Although honestly, it probably also tastes really good on top of oatmeal. One pan's gonna make a mess on me. I can feel it. Go away. Go away. There's a cherry cobbler. It came out really nice. Put some cooling racks out here. That way we can let everything cool. There we go. Grabbing my butter. So these empanadas are a little white. I did that on purpose because I do plan on frying them up at a later date. I just wanted them to be kind of set and held in place. So when I'm ready to make these, I will take them out of the freezer, I'll let them thaw, or I will plop them directly into my pan to fry. Now these biscuits look like they have some promise. Look at that. We got nice flaky biscuits. I still think they could be taller. But I think the trick with that is with the big guy. I think I just have to make them taller. But I mean, he got some nice height. Oh, and it smells absolutely beautiful. Yep, and they taste good. So we'll throw some butter on top. And I'm going to do some dishes while I wait for the rest of them to come out of the oven.
So I have to say, using the whey for the biscuits, hey proof, I think it makes a really wonderful um, buttermilk substitute. The flavor was really good. I'm going to start making mozzarella cheese more often. If only so I can have the way. So I think next week's going to be a lot of fun. I had somebody request um, some vegan recipes. So I found a nice uh, chocolate cake, some peanut butter cookies, and what was the third thing? Oh, the gingerbread. Um, not gingerbread cookies, actually gingerbread. And it uses a couple different types of um, ingredients to hold everything together that are not eggs, which is what we would typically use. So I'll have some fun making those next week. For any of the recipes for today, if you go to bakewithafluffy.food.blog, I have all the recipes there. The recipes for next week will also be there. As soon as I get off here, I will plop them on. And then if you have any questions or suggestions, I do now have a Discord. So you can hop onto the Fluffy Temper Discord, give me any suggestions for recipes you might want to see, any recipes giving you trouble. I would love to see anything that you've made whether it came out good or bad. Although, if it tastes good, did it really come out bad? forget one. Do you always forget one? Never fails. Just when you think you're done. Granted, I'm going to have a lot of baking sheets, so I'm not, not exactly done there. away. Pardon me, ma'am. You're going to want to scoot your bum. Come on. Thank you.
again. These are very, very pale. I mean, I got a very light golden brown there at the bottom before I make these again. Well, I'm going to freeze them and then I'm going to thaw them out and then put them on the stove top and we'll pan fry them to actually eat them. And the pan frying will finish them up. Not that they'd be unsafe to eat like this. Oh, come on. My nonstick pan isn't nonstick anymore. I wondered how long that would last. I got the answer, six months. Yeah, so what frying these would do is make them a little crispier. I guess I get to eat that when I broke it. So I'm going to finish baking these up, wash some pans, and I think it might be time to relax and uh, maybe cook some of these up and eat them because <laughs> they smell absolutely wonderful. Um, thank you for joining me today, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful evening. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will catch you next Friday for another Bake Like a Fluffy. We're going, going to go vegan. Have a wonderful night.